morning, fellas. Uh, welcome to this session of class, well, this session of English. Um, today, we are going to finish unit number eight in your English ID. So we can move to unit number nine next week. And the topic for today is, is about um, how to improve your listening skills. You see, in, in English, we have a uh, or macro skills, that's the way they call them, uh, macro skills. The macro skills are uh, two, one divided as inputs and two divided as uh, inputs, outputs and inputs. Inputs is all the information you receive from the outside, all the stimulus that you receive from the outside, for example, listening and reading. Those are some receptive skills. Receptive because you receive that is stimulus, the, the listening and the reading. And then you can process all that information so you will be able to produce. And that uh, production is called output. So the output is uh, your speaking and your reading, well, your writing, your writing. And uh, today we're gonna talk about how much uh, or how good you consider you are in those skills because we have some strong points and some weak points. So as a matter of fact, listening is not my best suit. I mean, um, I, I listen and I understand, but sometimes I just get distracted or I don't listen certain words or I don't understand certain words and, and I get lost. So that's why in every time, every time that I take a test, every time that I take an exam and include listening, I do well, but not as well as in other uh, skills. So this is my, the lowest score I got, it, it's in, in listening. I'm not saying that I'm bad, so bad at listening, but definitely it's not my best uh, suit, like I said. All right, and now I'm gonna ask you about uh, that, that particular skill. Um, let me see, Levi Guerra. Jonathan, are you with us? Ah, oh, yeah, sure, you are here. Jonathan? Levi? Can you talk, my friend? Ah, oh, you don't have a microphone. But you can share the, the, that information in the chat, please. Uh, how is your listening? How good is your listening? And then let me ask Roberto Hidalgo. Can you tell me how good you are in the listening skill? Hello. Hello, my friend. I I think that I am good to understand if the audio is little slow mm -hmm. to hear good. Mm -hmm. But what happens when the audio is not too slow? Maybe uh, 25%. Okay. Audi. Okay. Thank you. So then Levi says uh, he thinks that it's a little bad if the audio goes so fast. Huh. Good. That, that is very interesting. So you agree with, with Roberto. When people speak very fast, uh, it, it's hard to understand. And you have to remember, you have to remember every time that you watch a TV series or, or you actually have the opportunity to travel to the United States, uh, people don't slow down just because you don't understand. You see, you have to consider that. You have to get used to different, different uh, uh, speeds and different accents as well. Because people is not gonna slow down just because you said, no, no, excuse me, can you repeat that? Can you speak a little slower, please? So people in the stage or people in movies or TV shows, they won't stop for you or slow down in this case. But, but you're right, I mean, English is not our native language. So it, it's okay to not understand when people speak very fast. In English classes, in English classes is different because of one thing, our teachers are not native speakers, at least not most of us are native speakers. And also because due to the nature of the class, nature of the topics, we do not uh, speak too fast. Um, 
there's a big difference in a classroom and in the outside world. All right, let me see Rodrigo Ernesto Cruz. Neto, tell me, what about your listening skills? You can, you can chat it, you can chat that, please. How, how you consider yourself, it depends on the audio. Yeah, there are some confusing audios, the subjects sometimes, and the last, and also the speakers. Yes, you will see, you will see a, a, a video about how can you improve your, your listening skills. And all of the things that you're mentioning had been pointed out in that clip. So you will feel related to, to, to that topic. And the last question goes for um, Carmen Marroquín. Carmen, Carmen, are you with us? Yes, teacher. Okay, Carmen Sita, tell me, what about your listening skills? I think they are good, but when a native speaker is talking, it's very difficult because they have some, some neologism that it makes me difficult to understand in the moment. Actually, it is. It is difficult for you. It is difficult for most of us whose native uh, language is not English. And now I'm going to share with you a clip. Uh, it's about a, a YouTuber sharing some tips. This woman in the video, uh, she has been to different countries and she has been exposed, well, according to what she says, uh, she has been exposed to many variations of the English language and also different variations of other languages around the world. Uh, I mean, she's quite of a traveler, according to what she says in that clip. But you will find uh, some of the tips and tricks that she shared here, uh, very interesting for us, especially if we are planning to specialize in, in English, because some of you uh, got this class because you have to, because it's part of the, it is part of the national curricula and there's no way that you can skip it. But I think, I think that you're uh, planning ahead, you're planning your life. You know, some of you want to study abroad and apply for uh, scholarships. And, and that could be a good idea if you learn uh, the English language, it's gonna help you a lot. So, but I uh, sip it and I share the video with you. Okay, there she is. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to teach you different tips and tricks how to understand native speakers because sometimes they have such accents that their speech makes no sense to us non-English native speakers. So if you're interested, please continue watching. Back to San Francisco. Our minds may change. Now, when I was 14, I went to the UK and I stayed with a local family. I went to local school. It was like a two week trip. And during that trip, I realized I do not understand what people are telling me because what we learned at school, the English that we've learned at school was actually Russian version of the English language. And when I came to the UK and British people have this very distinct accent and they use really weird words, sometimes like weird for a Russian speaker. I just couldn't get what they were telling me. The only person I could interact with, with was my host mom because she really made an effort to speak like a English language teacher. So like that separating words. And when I wanted to communicate with British kids, I had a lot of trouble because they didn't want to make this effort and thus I didn't get what they were saying. So when I came back home, I realized I cannot just continue learning English in the way I have and I have to do something else. I have to do something new and now I'm going to tell you 
what I started to do. Tip number one, practice listening while reading simultaneously. And you guys are very lucky because now we Okay, this is, this is the first, uh, practice listening while you're reading simultaneously. So there are two ways you can do this with audio lib, audio books. And also we do it in, in classes when you are reading the, the spotlight lecture and, and, and then I play the audio. But also uh, if you watch uh, movies or TV series with the subtitles on, but uh, try to uh, use, uh, activate your subtitles in English, in English. So this is like a process where you start with uh, subtitles in Spanish, then you move ahead and change the language option for the subtitles and you uh, read them in English. And eventually you will feel comfortable enough and watch movies without subtitles. But this is like a process, you see. It's not something that you're gonna do right now, especially if you are the ones who watch dub movies. And I, I have told you many times, I have advised you many times in class, please, please, please do not watch uh, your movies dubbed. First, the voice quality is not the same. And there's a lot that is lost in translation. You see, the meaning of the things is not the same. We have YouTube, we have Netflix, which means that you can switch on a video on YouTube, like this one. You can just switch on subtitles on this video. Films the subtitles. And read along. That would help you train your visual part and train your listening part because you're gonna see the way I'm opening my mouth and you're gonna listen to what I'm saying and then your brain is gonna connect the two and this will train and train and train you. When I was a kid, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have Netflix. I even didn't have access to internet all the time. So what I used to do, I used to sing along to Britney Spears and you remember the CDs when we had like a little book coming with a CD with lyrics for every single song and that's what I did. I just listened to her music because I loved her and I just sang along uh, reading to the lyrics. The next step that I've taken when I was 16, uh, I went to the UK and I realized that Lily Allen, who later became my favorite singer, was really, really popular. So I bought her CD and this is the way I learned British accent because she sings with a really distinct British accent. And when you sing along, when you read those lyrics and you listen to her and you start to understand British people better. Advanced tip, if you think that this is too fast, like Marina, you're talking too fast, uh, Lily, you're singing too fast. Britney, you're singing too fast. What you can do, you can slow down the video 2x on YouTube and you could do it now, right here, down in the bottom section. So you can slow down the video 2x, my voice will become really weird, but then you would be able to follow me. Because sometimes, yes, I read your comments, sometimes you tell me I speak too fast, but this is something you have to get used to. Because when you come here, nobody will really make an effort to speak slower just because you do not understand. You will have to play alone and you will have to Okay, she just mentioned something that I said at the, at the beginning when you were uh, sharing your experiences with your listening. So people is not gonna uh, slow down just because uh, make you understand because that requires an effort. I mean, if you slow down, that requires an effort. People sometimes get confused when they speak too slow. So all of the thoughts get together and, and the information doesn't come out uh, so well. And, and also she shared an experience that she had as a teacher, I guess, when, when she was teaching kids and, and they were not able to, uh, no, they were not willing to slow down just because she could not uh, understand the kids. Just adapt to whatever is happening. And um, in terms of accents, I would say British accent has been the most difficult for me because it was really tough to understand British and they have a lot of regional accents like in London people would use one accent then you travel one hour away from London and it would be a completely different accent. The easiest country to understand accents is actually Canada because they have a mix of American and British and it's really really mild so if you're planning your trip abroad to study English I would really recommend Canada. Check out our schools below on Lingua Trip. My favorite is Isle of Sea and I also went to Isle 
like myself, I like Toronto. And if you guys love music, uh, like I do, I've recently bought a electric piano. I just sing songs in English and this is also the way I practice my pronunciation, uh, the way I practice listening skills. So she just bought a piano, an electric piano, so she can practice her speaking as well. So Carlos, 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 are you there? Carlos Molina? Good morning, teacher. Yes. Good morning, my friend. Did you listen what she said about the piano and that she sings in English? Yeah, and I do that with the little songs, the uh -huh. song of the Beatles. Do you, do you sing in English or something else besides the Beatles or just the Beatles? I think that only the Beatles, yeah, only, only the, the Beatles. Beatles, because I see the songs to learn. Uh, uh -huh. Are you planning to, I don't know, to play somebody else's music mm. in English, of course? I don't know because I don't, I don't know more, more groups, more bands. Oh, okay, I see. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe yes, yeah. In the future, it's, it's, a, it's a project for the future. Yeah, also with Robert, in the, the the last year we uh -huh. used to to see beautiful songs with the lyrics and, and yeah like in like a meeting in zoom oh, to good. practice english yeah. wow oh that that in that really helped and you see that she's also uh, saying that that really works and it does from your experience okay yeah, yeah. thank you thank you if you think that you're advanced, you know what you have to do? Uh, try to sing along Eminem, uh, Lose Yourself. Commercials, commercials suck. And if you're brave enough, you can record it and put it on your Instagram and tag me, hashtag lingua marina, hashtag lingua trip. I'm gonna check it out and I'm gonna give you my feedback. Let's try it. Tip number two, when native speakers speak, they tend to say one sentence as one word. So they don't say, do you want to grab a coffee? Yes, this is really easy for you to understand, but you have to learn to understand one sentence as one word. Do you want to grab a coffee? That sounds just like one sentence. This would also help you with spoken English because you have to do the same in order for people to understand you. Could you repeat that? Tip number three. In order to be able to understand when native speakers are talking, you need to be able to understand distinct words. Sometimes you don't have to understand the whole sentence. You just have to get what are the most important words in the sentence and then you're gonna figure out the meaning. So don't worry if you listen to somebody and there are some words you do not understand. And this applies to reading as well. You don't have to know every single word. And if you feel that you have to check out every single word that is new for you, don't do that. Because if you're reading a book and like every third word um, is new, then you won't be reading a book. You will be just consulting your vocabulary and dictionary all the time. Your task is to figure out what are these most important words in the sentence. And the most important words are not. So, and I think, I think that some of you have mastered this ability. It is try to understand things in the context. For example, you're listening or you're also reading because this is applicable for reading as well. You don't really need to understand everything uh, because there are, like she's, she said, that there are some important words uh, that connects you with the main idea. So if you're reading a book, for example, this one that you read, uh, The Departure by Night, there, there were a lot of confusing words, but you could understand the situations going on just because of the context in there. And the, the, the same happens in, 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 in listening. You know the context, you know what it's said about, 
and you hear one word and you grab the whole idea. You, your, your brain puts all of your ideas together and you are able to understand because she said that it's very tiring and time consuming if you start looking for every word that you don't understand in the dictionary. Normally, nouns, adjectives, and verbs. There are a lot of filler words that you don't have to understand and normally native speakers pronounce them less louder than the main words. The words that you don't have to really get are articles and prepositions, uh, like articles A, V, and prepositions like at, on, to. If you don't get them, that's okay. And people tend to kind of swallow them and be ready for that. Hello? Hello, I'm from the Health So for example, if we go to the coffee thing, you can just omit all of the function words and you're gonna get, you won't get cup coffee. Actually, if you say that, native speakers are gonna get what you're saying. And when native speakers pronounce those function words really fast, do you wanna get a cup of coffee? So you wanna get a cup of coffee? You know what you've heard? You wanna get cup coffee. And you don't really hear those function words, and this is how the native speaker's speech works. Tip number four. Native speakers tend to use a lot of filler words, like, like. Like, I'm saying this, but like, I don't mean this. Well, we also, uh, this year we work with this topic. Uh, I, I don't think that I did it with you. So, but the class is in, in YouTube channel. So you, if you want to check it, check it. But we work with some filler words. What are filler words? So those are the ones that we, in Spanish, we call like muletillas. So those words help us to give us time, you see, in order to get the next words because sometimes uh, we don't come out with the right answer, so we don't come up with the whole ideas, and we need time to process the, the responses we're gonna give or the comment we're gonna do. Um, you use fillers like, uh, in English is very common to use, uh, it's like, uh, a like. so that like, uh, it doesn't mean anything in the sentence. It's just there to give time to the speaker to process the whole thing, to process the idea and to come up with what is next. In, in Spanish, we have uh, different types of muletillas or filler words. In English, they also do. They have a lot of fillers, but the most common filler they have, uh, the most common filler they use is like, uh, I don't know if it's like, uh, and they, they use it a lot. And we work with this lesson uh, last term. You get it, right? So like is everywhere. I was like, I was like meditating. What you should know is that like has no actual meaning. It doesn't make any sense in the sentence. It is just used for you to win some time and think of what you're trying to say next. Sometimes like replaces actual words. And this is when you have to get the meaning. So for example, and I was like, let's go and see the movie. So in this case, I was like replaces and I said. Also, like is used when you are uncertain of something. I think he's like a doctor, maybe. So you are not sure if he's a doctor. As you see, people use like all the time. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. It's important for you to know what are the cases when people are using like and this applies to many words in English. And this is why I'm teaching you a lot of idioms, a lot of slang words. So when you hear the native speaker, you will get exactly what every single word means. So write them down and remember them. Okay, and number five, as I mentioned, there are so many accents. I would say in America, like if you travel from West Coast to the East Coast, you won't really hear the accent. I Time to scout. say that something is weird about the speech but I won't be able to tell what exactly but if you're in the UK and you go from London to Edinburgh oh my god you're gonna hear it straight away their accents are really really tough first don't panic like it's okay even native speakers panic like when I was in Germany and I went to Zurich people speak German in Zurich but they speak Swiss German I couldn't get a thing and it's okay it happens to native speakers as well normally when you come to a city 
you adjust to local accent and you get the local accent. So make sure you're traveling to the right. Okay, uh, her comments can give you confidence uh, every time that you don't, uh, <laughs> yeah, the commercial. All right, so um, that is gonna be, give you confidence, you see, uh, because uh, you feel frustrated sometimes, so you feel ashamed when you don't understand uh, certain accents. But as she pointed out, it's, it's normal that you don't understand certain accents. So here in Latin America, we have also our own English accent. So many of us got that Latin accent, that this is the way they call it, Latin English accent. So we uh, speak English very well. I mean, they can understand us, but they notice uh, that we don't sound like a, like an American, you see, no matter how hard you try, you, we will never sound like a native speaker because we were born here in El Salvador. And, and, and this is totally normal. So when you speak or when you listen to somebody, uh, don't feel ashamed or don't feel panic, like she said, that we don't understand or that we don't sound okay. It's okay uh, to sound like the way we sound in English because we're not native speakers. Right place. Because when I traveled to Great Britain, um, when I was 14, 15, 16, I went to those language schools and I ended up having a nice British accent when I was 21 and then I moved to America. And well, it took me maybe like two or three months to change my accent to American one. And it's okay. Just be ready that if you spend some time in a certain environment, you're gonna get the accent. And if you spend a lot of time in Scotland, for example, in a small village in Scotland, make sure that um, you try and sound more traditional when you're talking to people outside Scotland. Word up! My last advice for you is to expose yourself to as many accents as you can. And if you travel to a big city like New York, like Los Angeles, you're gonna meet a lot of people. And the more you talk, the more you, the more time you spend in the environment, the better you get at understanding accents. Watch as many movies and TV shows in English as you can. Uh, as I mentioned, there are several websites where you can do that, netflix.com, um, you can switch on subtitles, HBO Now is my favorite because on HBO Now you can watch Silicon Valley, my favorite TV show, and Westworld, which is also a great one. Um, so you can buy a subscription there for like $14 and you go and watch them. And of course, the best thing you can do is travel and spend a couple weeks or a couple months abroad. Uh, she she talked to us like we were quite, quite of a travelers, right? So we don't go out of the country very often. Or well, actually, some of us has never uh, a flood in a flood in a in an airplane. But if we can afford um, an airplane ticket, or nowadays that there are a lot of restrictions in the airports. Uh, we don't travel very often, or well, actually we don't travel at all. Uh, the best solution for that problem is television, video games. So I remember that my, my first steps into the English language was by playing Zelda, right? The Ocarina of the Time. That, that, that was my uh, initiative. I mean, I, I just uh, wanted to play that game. And it turns out that it was in English and I have to make an effort to understand uh, what they were saying. And I learned a lot of words from, from Zelda. That does a fabulous, fabulous uh, video game. While studying in a local language school, the link will be below. You can check out the schools, check out the pricing. We'll be happy. So, and there she ends. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I, I, uh, Pokemon is a good game to learn English too. Uh, do you remember, I don't know how much attention you pay during the English festival opening ceremony. There's this guy who studies in Japan. He also mentioned that, that he learned from Pokemon game. Cause I remember when he was my student, uh, he liked to talk about Pokemon and his friends also. A comment a lot about Pokemon. So there are many, many, many video games that, that can help you to master the English language and also the uh, listening, reading skills and all that. 
So now let's move to the topic in the lesson, lesson five in your books. Let me share it with you. So you have to open your books on page 89 or 90. Let me see, it's, it's page 90, page 90. So the name of the lesson is, is your listening improving? So we have discussed uh, that previously. And there we have some logos of very important brands all around the world. There's MySpace, uh, Starbucks, Gap. And this one I think is the, the media player in your computers, Windows media player, if I'm not wrong. So we're gonna see which one do you prefer, the old one or the new one, because they have changed the logos. Now let me see your opinion right here. Um, someone who can actually open the microphone. Uh, Gabriel Ernesto, can you unmute your microphone? Gabriel, Gabriel. Let me see the chat. Oh, you can't. Okay. But leave me your, your opinion. Which logo do you prefer? The all my space or the new one? The new one. So I ask in, a, in another class, which one people prefer? And most of them, they say that they prefer the old one because this one, it was very, very simple, very basic. But I think, I think that sometimes that you find beauty in small things or simple things. And I do prefer it as well. I prefer the new one as well because it's more basic, simpler. And when you, uh, when the company comes very famous, you, you don't need to read the name of that brand because you just get familiar with one image. So for example, for Adidas or Nike, you, you don't need to read the, the name of the brand in the logo to just see the three stripes or the boomerang. And well, actually it's not a boomerang, it's a swag, I think is the way they call it. And, and you know that is Nike, Nike. It's funny too. Okay, uh, my dear Carmencita, which one do you prefer? The old or the new Starbucks log? Carmen, Carmen, which one do you prefer? Let me see, the new one. So this time I, I disagree with you. Uh, they, they got the same concept. So they are so famous now. The brand is so recognized around the world that they don't need to uh, show their names out there. You just recognize it. They just uh, take the name away from the logo. They change the color. You see they incorporated green inside a circle. And that's it. it, it is simpler, it is more basic, but I don't like it. But many people consider that, that the mermaid speaks by herself, the brand speaks by itself. They don't need to uh, get their name in the logo because they can easily, people can easily recognize it just by this. But I, I prefer this one. I do, I personally prefer this one. But many people like you, Carmen, prefer the new one. Gap, I think that that has to do with clothes. Right, uh, let me ask uh, Monica. Are, are you here, Monica? I, uh, yeah. um, hello, teacher. Hello, my dear. Uh, which logo do you prefer? The old one or the new one? Gap. Mm, 
I think um, the old one. The old one. If there's a yeah. particular reason why? Is there any reason? I don't know. Um, the fuente. Ah, the font. Is, the font is um, more special, maybe. Uh -huh. And the new one is just the word is mm, I don't like it <laughs> it's not a, it's not visually attractive for you exactly yeah okay good that's a good point and this is exactly what it happened to me I, I prefer uh, contrary to you I prefer the new one because I don't like uh, lower case no uppercase letters like here capital letters I don't like them I, I just it's, it's one thing, it's one of my things. I don't like to see capital letters all in the titles or headlines or brands. I prefer the combination of uh, upper and lower case uh, fonts. And that's why maybe I like this one better. Uh, and there's a concept maybe with the blue square here because they didn't take it away. They just uh, make it smaller, you see, because the square is still in the logo, but now it is in the distance, it look in the background. There might be a meaning about this, but we don't know and we don't care. And the multimedia player in Windows. Let me see, uh, Hector, are you awakened? Hector Ayala? Oh, he's maybe in bed. Um, Jordi, Jordi Giron, Jordi Josue Giron. Ah, no, Hector is there. And he says that he prefers the new one. Sorry, Hector, I thought that you were uh, sleeping. The new one. Okay, Hector prefers the new one and so do I. I think this one is much, much, much better. Way too much better. Thank you, Hector. So then we have to exercise here to be completed. Exercise B, you're gonna to listen to the beginning of the college lecture on Logo Maker, Logo Makeover. Logo Makeover, so I'm changing the, the lecture. Makeover means to change. I know that you're familiar with that thing because there are a lot of TV shows about makeovers. So people make over many things, houses, appearances, a car sometimes. And guess what will not be discussed? We have three topics here about uh, logos, makeovers. Which one is not mentioned? So you have to predict, but we're not gonna predict anything. And then after the beep, uh, you have to circle the best response. You can do it before, you can do it after. The idea is that you, you pay attention to what they're saying. The guy is talking about MySpace and the Starbucks logos, and he gives his opinion about it. Now we're gonna listen to every conversation and every lecture twice. Audio 8.18. The next couple of days. So today, as part of our Image is Everything series, we're going to be looking at the reasons behind three different companies, global companies, altering their logos and how their target markets liked or didn't like the new versions. And trust me, some of the stories are fascinating. Our very first audio 8.18. The next couple of days. So today, as part of our Image is Everything series, we're going to be looking at the reasons behind three different companies, global companies, altering their logos and how their target markets liked or didn't like the new versions. And trust me, some of the stories are fascinating. Our very first...
Audio 8.19. So, as most of you probably know, MySpace was by far the most popular social networking site from 2006 to 2008. At the time, it was worth what? About $12 billion. <laughs> yeah, things were going pretty well for MySpace. But one day. Facebook came along, and sadly, MySpace started to shrink. Profits fell, people were fired, and so on. So here's what MySpace does. It radically changes its logo. Now, do I like it? Well, obviously, existing users, the people who already access MySpace, won't have trouble remembering the name of the site. However, if you're trying to attract new users, you know, people who might have never visited the site, then that might not work. I mean, how do they type the address? What name do they Google? So, was this a good idea? Hmm. Definitely not. Now, take a look at the second slide. As some of you may know, in 2011, Starbucks celebrated its, uh, its 40th anniversary. To mark the occasion, they must have thought, hey, let's create a new logo and drop the words Starbucks coffee. Well, unfortunately, most Starbucks customers were not crazy about the new logo. They preferred the old one and didn't quite understand why Starbucks took their name off. Well, personally, I find the new green logo simple and elegant. You see, Starbucks and its logo are well known all over the world. And the green circle, well, the green circle speaks for itself. In other words, the logo doesn't need to tell the world that it's Starbucks coffee. Everybody knows that. Audio 8.19 So, as most of you probably know, MySpace was by far the most popular social networking site from 2006 to 2008. At the time, it was worth, what, about $12 billion. <laughs> yeah, things were going pretty well for MySpace. But one day... Facebook came along, and sadly, MySpace started to shrink. Profits fell, people were fired, and so on. So here's what MySpace does. It radically changes its logo. Now, do I like it? Well, obviously, existing users, the people who already access MySpace, won't have trouble remembering the name of the site. However, if you're trying to attract new users, you know, people who might have never visited the site, then that might not work. I mean, how do they type the address? What name do they Google? So, was this a good idea? Hmm. Definitely not. Now, take a look at the second slide. As some of you may know, in 2011, Starbucks celebrated its, uh, its 40th anniversary. To mark the occasion, they must have thought, hey, let's create a new logo and drop the words Starbucks coffee. Well, unfortunately, most Starbucks customers were not crazy about the new logo. 
They preferred the old one and didn't quite understand why Starbucks took their name off. Well, personally, I find the new green logo simple and elegant. You see, Starbucks and its logo are well-known all over the world. And the green circle, well, the green circle speaks for itself. In other words, the logo doesn't need to tell the world that it's Starbucks coffee. Everybody knows that. Okay, just to check the answers and to verify that you have all the same uh, in exercise B, the answer is the costs involved. So this is the topic that is not gonna be discussed in the lecture. And actually we did not hear anything related to prices. Then in exercise C, the words that you were supposed to underline or circle in number one, negative, number two, new, number three, doesn't like, Number four, didn't like. Five, his opinion. And six, explain what he said. Those were the answers. So then we want to move to this exercise. Because I, I find it very, very interesting. So you're going to draw. Uh, you can use uh, a piece of paper, a pen, or whatever you have at hand. Or you can use the computer. Uh, just in case that you have a program, an application that can be used for designing logos. Well, actually, there are some websites, uh, Logo Maker. Yeah, you can access from your computers, Google Logo Maker, and you will create uh, a variety of logos there. But you have to think of a company. So draw an authentic company logo for any category. So you're gonna choose one category yourself. Uh, a sports clothing company, fast food company, car, technology, TV channel. You can also create a TV channel or a fashion company. Now, this thing is, is easier for accountants. I don't know if accountants study this advertisement. No, I, I think it's part of your curricula. To study advertisement, how to create a company. This is like uh, entrepreneurship. And you have to create the logo of your company. And you're going to tell me what are you selling. But first, you have to pick a sports, a clothing company, fast food, a TV channel. What are you going to create? That's one thing that you need to, to, to decide. All right, um, so uh, it's eight, uh, eight in the morning. I think that I'm gonna give you 15 minutes, 15 minutes to work on this. Uh, access from your computers or you can do it by hand if you want, create your own logo. You can, like I said, go to Logo Maker, or you can also access to Canva, canva.com. So there's one option there for you to uh, create your own logos. But let me give you a hand just, just in case. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can Google Logo Maker. Create your own logo for your company. Enter a logo name, so it, that will depend on your, on your company. Or you can go to Canva. Canva.com and you have Logo Maker here. You see, I just, just uh, click on Logo Maker, you will get a free logo here. So those are the choices you have. Logo Maker for every industry, 
So you just gotta be careful to enter to a free place where you don't have to pay anything or logo maker in Canva. So uh, you're gonna work with this for 15 minutes. And then uh, if we have time that I think we will, um, you're gonna share uh, the screen, you're gonna share your logos to the class, just in case that we have time. 15 minutes from now, please work in your logos. Uh, do you have any questions, questions or doubts about what you're doing? Questions, questions, doubts? No questions. So get to work then. Okay, let's wait for Neto so he can share his logo with us. While he is downloading his logo, does anybody else finish with the logo company that you have created? Uh, so for the ones who are good, uh, you see, you got those artistic things. Uh, you might have created a logo for your band. For the Chavez brothers, right? For a pizza. Okay. Do, do you have it ready, Molina? Can you share it? Okay, please. Yeah, now. Really? But it says here that you can share, it says here, you can share. Okay, try now. Okay, let me see. Okay, try for the last time. Okay, uh, Ernesto, are you ready? Okay, uh, check if you can share the screen with us. Okay, please.
Okay, now explain us, what is it? For me, it's like a perfume, but you can explain what is it in the chat. Ah, a healthy food company. Oh, by Asano. What language is that? Italian. By Asano means go healthy in Italian. Oh, very interesting. The essence of the field. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. And now we're also learning Italian by Asano. I don't know if it's pronounced that way, but we have learned an, Spanish, uh, an Italian expression. Thank you, Neto. Uh, Molina, you ready? Why Molina, why you can't? You see, uh, my dear Neto was able to share. Maybe you can share the file in the chat so I can present it for you. Ah, it's the cell phone. So maybe that's, that's the problem. But if you send it by the chat, chat box, I, I can, I share it with you. While my dear Carlos is working on that, uh, does anybody else work in that logo? Or just Neto and, and Molina? Maybe I can share. Okay, please. Okay. Um, um, a ver, ahí está. Can you see it? Yes. Uh, now, ah, I understand, but explain, please. Um, um, I like the idea of uh, fashion. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah, um, the like a boutique with my own designs, um, mm -hmm. with a concept um, elegant, um, with class. I don't know, is oh. is I like very much this idea is, I don't know. And I think the logo um, give this message, like some elegant and yeah. And also gives you the feeling of, um, you see the exclusivity. Exactly. Yeah. Top. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Con congratulations for your, your idea as well. Is, uh, is there a reason for the name? Lushi? It's, it's Lushi. Ah. Um, it's curious, the name. Um, I like so much this word, but mm -hmm. when I search the meaning, um, it's like word. I, I don't know what it exactly means, but mm -hmm. I like the word. It's Lushi. Oh, sounds, this, and it sounds, sounds sounds Italian, sophisticated. I don't know, related to fashion. Hey, you get a, you did an excellent work here. Yeah. Wow! Congratulations. Thanks. The Latinas, <laughs> I think, says that Nesto there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Molina, ready? Not ready? Half ready? Okay, you sent me the... Okay, I, I will share it with you and you explain, Molina, 
Or what is this? Is you said it's pizza, right? But tell me about the symbols. Yeah, I I make this logo to to a hunger of yeah this year of of how do you say laboratory de creatividad of that that uh, segment. That's ah, a, that well the creativity. Yeah, and was in group. I was with Carmen and Camilo. And that is the reason that in the logo are three people, three persons, one girl and two boys. One is Carmen and the other two are Camilo and me. This and is you, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay. Oh, excellent idea. Excellent um, visual picture here. I did it in paint. Yeah, paint 3D. 3D. Yeah. So that's the new version for paint, right? I have never used it. But um, I find it's it good. interesting. Okay. It's free. Yeah. Yeah, and I see. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's for free. And Pixote, the, the, the special ingredient was the flor de sote. Only that. That's the, <laughs> that's the innovation. Only that. The flor de sote pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Pixote. Interesting and exotic as well and very regional. Thank you, guys. Uh, is there anybody else who wants to share? Anybody? Or just these three guys? One more goes at three, goes at two, goes at one. Okay, so thank you very much for your excellent work today. And I hope that you keep it on during the whole year. And so that's it, see you, see you Monday. Have an excellent day. Bye, teacher. Bye-bye.